Yo, what's up, family? So I just got finished making um, a crescent roll cheesecake, and I have to let it cool and put it in the refrigerator. So I'm patiently waiting on that, and I'm reading the Book of Enoch right now, <clears throat> chapter 98 and 99. So family, I'm just going to leave the camera on this so you can read this. But I wanted to talk a little bit more. Um, this is probably going to take me a couple studies to do with you guys. Um, so be patient with me, but, um, I'm going to speak on how Jeremiah prophesies about Babylon and ancient Babylon, but it also refers to mystery Babylon. If you cross reference, you know, scriptures in revelation with the ones that Jeremiah speaks of. Um, so I'm going to read a few examples and I'm also going to make a video about what Isaiah prophesied about as well as John and Daniel. So it's going to probably take me a few videos to do, but we're going to start with Jeremiah because the last video, that's where I was kind of focused on was Jeremiah. But, um, yeah, it's going to take, it's going to take a little, little bit, but I want to, um, explain to people my perspective and my reason for believing why I think Mystery Babylon is America, and I don't think it's the Vatican, and my reasons for thinking it's not the Vatican and other things. So I've got my studying for my backup, you know, and I'm, I'm more than, you know, I welcome anybody that would like to have some dialogue on it or maybe can tell me something that I, I may be missing or that I may have gotten wrong that I need to um, go back and study a little bit more. But um, the things that I've been through in my life, guys, and what I witnessed when I was a little girl, I just, I know everything that's taking place right now is happening for a reason. So, you know, when I, <clears throat> I kind of got lost for like a decade, you know, I, I backslid for a long time. I was more focused on myself and what the world thought about me and, you know, the death of my mom and my going through a divorce, it, it shook me, so it, it just, it got me off my path, but, like, when the pandemic hit, I had time at home, and I had time to, you know, plant a garden and read the scriptures more, and I was praying more, and um, the year before the pandemic is when something personal happened to me, and the Lord spoke to me and saved me. So, I mean, there's been so many things that's took place. I mean, I can name so many things that's took place throughout my life, even, even when I was on drugs and doing crazy stuff when I was younger. But anyway, family, um, I tell these things because I want people to be prepared, and I don't want their hearts to fail them when these things take place. And I really don't want anybody to perish and go to hell because, I mean, some of these people, I just, it's just no good. You know, it's like you, you, you feel sorry for them because they, they really don't, they just don't realize what they're, what they're bringing over their own head. It's sad. But anyway, I hope this can maybe help some people. Um, <clears throat> but Jeremiah prophesied um, that Babylon would be the center of a one world Luciferian religious movement. That's in Jeremiah fifty one forty four. Babylon would be the youngest and the greatest of the end time nations. That's in Jeremiah um, fifty twelve. Babylon would be the most powerful nation in the world, and you can also cross reference that in Isaiah chapter forty seven, but that's in Jeremiah fifty and fifty one, and you can also cross reference it in Revelation eighteen, family. Just take the time to read these scriptures and ask the Lord to give you confirmation and to confirm this, you know, and and pray over it. You know, don't take my word for it. Definitely look these scriptures up and read them for yourself. Um, Babylon would be the hammer of the world, of the whole earth. That's in Jeremiah 50, 23 and Revelation 18, 23. Babylon would be the praise of the whole earth. Jeremiah 51, 41. Babylon is a land rich in mineral wealth, Jeremiah 51, 13. Babylon is the leading agricultural nation of the world, Jeremiah 50 and 51 and Revelation 18. Babylon is the leading exporting nation 
in the world. Jeremiah 51, 13, Revelation 18. Babylon is the leading importing nation of the entire world. Jeremiah 50, 51, and Revelation 18. Babylon is a nation filled with warehouses. Jeremiah 50, 26. Babylon is the leading nation, industrial nation of the world. Isaiah 13, 47, Jeremiah chapter 50, Jeremiah chapter 51, and Revelation 18. Babylon is noted for her horses. <laughs> I, I think about Kentucky. I mean, Jeremiah 50, 37. Babylon is noted for her cattle, sheep, and other livestock. Jeremiah 50, 26. Let's see. And um, also in Revelation 18, verses 13. Babylon is noted for her fine flour and mill operations. Revelation 18, 13. Babylon is a nation of farmers and harvesters and huge crops. That's in Jeremiah 50, 16, 26, and 27. Babylon has a huge aviation program. That's in Isaiah 14, verses 13 through 14. Jeremiah 51, verse 53. Um, Babylon's skies are filled with the whisper of aircraft wings, Isaiah 18, 1, and Jeremiah 51, 53. Babylon fortifies her skies with a huge military aviation program. That's in Jeremiah 51, 53. That one's quite interesting. You should read that one, family. I've read that one not too long ago. Babylon is portrayed as a leading in high-tech weapons and abilities, Jeremiah 51, 53. Babylon is a coastal nation and split into many waters, Jeremiah 51, 13. Babylon is a singular nation founded upon, founded upon out of many one. Babylon was born a Christian nation. Babylon turns up its heritage and destroys it all in the end. Kind of like a civil war, maybe. Jeremiah 50, 11. Um, Babylonians, Christian, uh, Christian leaders lead their flock astray in prophecy and salvation. That's in Jeremiah chapter 50, verse 6. And you can imply it in the book of Revelation chapter 18, verses 2. Okay, let's see, family. Babylon sets off detention centers. For Jews and Christians and rounds them up for extermination. That's in Jeremiah chapter 50 verse 7 chapter 33, Jeremiah chapter 51 verse 35, and Jeremiah chapter 49. <clears throat> and it's also in Revelation 17 6 and Revelation 18 verse 24. Babylon has a mother nation that remains in existence from her birth to death. That's in Jeremiah 50, verse 12, which is England. The mother of Babylon has the symbol of a lion. That's in Daniel 7, 4, Ezekiel 38, 18, Jeremiah 51, 38, Psalm 17, 12. The mother of Babylon will rule over her daughter her entire life. That's in Daniel 7 and Jeremiah 50, 12. You know, follow the money. We are under a total control of England's banks and have been since 1914. The mother of Babylon will be a state of major decline at the end. That's in Jeremiah 50, 12. Babylon is considered to be the lion's whelp. That's in Ezekiel 38, 13, Jeremiah 51, 38, and also verse 58. Babylon will have the symbol of an eagle and builds her nest in the stars. That's Daniel 7, 4. Eagle wings. That's in Isaiah 14, 13. And also in Jeremiah chapter 51, verse 53. Who, hel you know, who else has a space program? Babylon is a huge producer and exporter of automobiles. That's in Jeremiah 50, 37 and Revelation 18, 13. Babylon is a nation of craftsmen, experts, and in, in their trade as well. <clears throat> That's in Jeremiah 50 and 51 and Revelation 18, verse 22. Babylon is a nation with a great voice in world affairs. <laughs> Jeremiah 51, 55. Babylon will be an instrumental in setting up of Israel in the Middle East. 
and is the home of God's people. Jeremiah 50 verses 47 and Jeremiah 51 verse 45. Babylon will be a major enemy to her north. That is Jeremiah 50 verse 3, Jeremiah chapter 9, and Jeremiah chapter 41. The enemy of Babylon will also have a huge aviation military machine. That's in Jeremiah 50, Revelation 18. Throughout most of those scriptures, that's what it talks about. Babylon will have her borders cut off and there will be no way of escaping. <clears throat> that's in Jeremiah 50, verse 28 and 51, verse 32. Babylon is a land vast with huge cities, towns, and villages throughout. Babylon will have a missionary nation for Jesus Christ. Babylon will be a home with multitudes of Jews who leave. The people of Babylon will not know their true identity. That's in Jeremiah 56. The people of Babylon will grow mad upon their idols. You don't say. Jeremiah 50 verse 2 and um, also Jeremiah chapter 38. How is the hammer of the whole earth cut asunder and broken? How has Babylon become a desolation among the nations? That's in Jeremiah 50 verse 23. Um. <clears throat> It plays a, you know, we've talked about how they play a big role in the space, you know, having things go to the heavens. That's in Jeremiah 51, 3. It's the world's leaders um, when it comes to assemble, and it talks about the world's leaders come together and meet and assemble. Like, they're the main ones that make that happen. Um, incorporate many aspects of the old Babylonian religion. You see that everywhere today's times. That's in Jeremiah 50, verse 2. So, you know, Jeremiah seen many things, and so did Isaiah and John. So the next time I'm going to do some more reading and, and, sh and show you how they thought about Mystery Babylon, because especially the Apostle John. The Apostle John out of the book of Revelation is very important. And all of these kind of correspond and cross-reference with each other, family. But... There is no other city or nation on the world, you know, really that can fill, fulfill these requirements, in my opinion, other than the United States of America. I mean, there's so much proof if you really take the time, you know, to do the research, family. Um, I, <laughs> that there's just a lot. And I think New York City has a lot to do with it. But, um, you know, you'll hear some people say, well, it's just going to be New York City. You, I, I beg to differ. It's going to be the whole entire nation. Like everybody, you know, that's why you, you really have to have a, a faith very, very strong with Yeshua, with Jesus Christ's family. Because the times that are coming in the future are not going to be great like everybody thinks they're going to be. And, um, you know, I'm, I'll get more into the Vatican, you know, how some people will say, you know, they, they think... Mystery Babylon's the Vatican, but I'm going to show you through John and through Daniel and Jeremiah and all these other prophets, you know, that it's not the Vatican and it's not what these people want you to believe. There's so much, you know, even with the book of Enoch, there's so much information out there, family, that they don't want you to know about and they don't want you to research and look into, but you really have to take the time to, to read these things. Or to look them up and, and research. You know, don't take my word for it. Look it up for yourself. Pray about it. But there's so many reasons, you know, why. And and, and when I've prayed over what's going to come to this nation, if we don't repent and go back to our old ways, you know, and turn, turn, turn from our wicked ways, basically, as the Lord tells us to. If we don't do that as a nation, what's going to happen? I've always been led to the book of Jeremiah, and I'm sensitive, man. You know, I, I, I get upset how people act nowadays and how people treat one another and um, just all the hate and the division. It, 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 it makes me weary at times. So, but Jeremiah was known as the weeping prophet, you know, and and then when the Lord reminded me about Jeremiah 419, you know, here recently, about the sound of war, the alarm of war, it just, it really, you know, the Lord knows how to shake you when he wants to, you know, 
And if he wants you to get a message out, whether you're comfortable doing it or not, that's irrelevant. It's, you know, we are to obey him and to, you know, submit to the Lord. So I may be uncomfortable talking about this, but at the same time, I think it needs to be known. So, I mean, I'm going to go into more detail, and Revelation really is a book that means a lot to me because it, it kind of, it goes with what I witnessed and seen when I was a child, when I was just a little kid. So, you know, a lot of these books mean something to me because I've, I've, I've witnessed it, I've heard it, I've seen it, and I've heard it, and I've read it. <laughs> I mean, it's... You know, look at the books also, guys. Check out the books that they've taken out of the Bible. There's like the book of Enoch. There's a lot of books that are very, very relevant to these times. They're, again, cross-referencing scriptures, you know, that Jesus even spoke the same things that Enoch spoke. There's many scriptures. You can go back on some of my older videos where I spoke about that. But, um, family, I love you guys. I hope you have a great weekend. I think my cheesecake is finally cooled off enough, so I'm fixing to enjoy me some cheesecake. Um, but stay safe, guys, and stay aware. You know, be stay vigilant. Like, I can't stress that. Don't be deceived in these times because um, the first casualty of war, you know, if you know, is the truth. It's, that is always going to be like that. And, of course, the innocent. The innocent are going to die in war. It's a sad thing, but, you know, for many years, we've been one of those countries that, that sit back and we see it on TV. But, you know, people has got it in their heads that there's something that would never happen here. And um, I, I just, I, I feel that's wrong. And I feel that a lot of people are going to, you know, their hearts are going to fail them when, when stuff like this does pop off in America. Because I think our days are numbered. And um, I, I hope that you each will be prepared for that day and be prepared for the Lord to come back. You know, just because these things may have to come to pass, if you're right with the Lord, we conquer in the end. So, you know, even if, even if something happens to you, if you're right with Christ, then you're, you're going to go where you need to go. But, you know, from what I'm reading in, you know, the book of Enoch, and in chapter 98, 99, this is, you know, that's not what you want. I mean, the Most High God is very loving. He's so, he's so gracious. But, you know, he gives us our own will and he, he lets us make our own choices, family. You choose your own path. But there will come a day where there's going to be a payment. There's going to be a judgment. Love you guys.